Hey guys, welcome back. We are now on week 21 of cycle three. We're doing probability experiments. Again, we're gonna start out this week by defining probability. Probability is the mathematical study of chance. You got it now. And um, why do we study probability in CC? And in science time, we study probability to help us know God's world more and to start to learn the grammar of the tools um, and how to know when some things could just happen or could not have just happened um, when we get to bigger concepts and ideas later on. So that is the definition and why we study it. And each week we're getting again a little bit deeper into probability. The first week we were very concrete with talking about probability dilemmas. Um, last week we talked about sampling, um, the, the type of dilemmas that can come with that when you take a small grouping to make a conclusion or an estimation of a large group. And so today we're talking about combination. So this idea of sampling or combination or other things we're going to, permutations we'll mention today, or other things we're going to talk about later on, are just different probability dilemmas or questions. So we had talked about the first week that everything besides God has a certain percentage of chance. And so with everything in this world has a percentage of chance, there's all kinds of dilemmas and probability questions out there. And so we're just kind of, um, again, learning the grammar of the different kind of probability dilemmas. And so that's what the sampling was. That is what combination is. It's just looking at a different kind of probability, concern, dilemma, question, whatever you want to call it. And so combination is an arrangement of objects in which the order does not matter. So the order of how you combine the subjects in your question do not matter. Um, and that is what a combination is called or that's the definition of a combination. So today we're gonna to look at a combination probability concern or dilemma, I like the word dilemma. And so um, the guy gives us the um, question of entering a pizza place. And so you're gonna ask your kids if you were to walk into a pizza place and they only have three ingredients. They have um, cheese, they have pepperoni, and they have red and red pepper. Excuse me, red peppers. Um, what is the probability that you're going to get the pizza that you want? And what do we have to figure out to know that? Well, we have to know using those three ingredients. What are all the different kinds of pizzas they can make? And then we decide which one we want. And then we figure out the probability that we would get the combination or arrangement of ingredients that we would desire. So in our classes, each um, kid will get their um, get a card stock with a big pizza circle in it. It won't have the words behind it like this one does. But um, so they'll have their own pizza. And then you're going to give each student a red chip that's going to symbolize red peppers, the blue chip that's going to symbolize pepperoni um, or meat, whatever you want to call it, and then the white's going to symbolize cheese. And so this may help them to think through, okay, what are you going to put on your pizza? Well, you could just put red peppers, or you could just put meat, or you could just put ah, cheese, or you could put cheese and pepperoni, or cheese and red peppers. Or you could just put no cheese and just have red peppers and pepperoni. Um, or you could have all three on your pizza. And so as the kids play around and experiment with these three ingredients, I want you to write, you're going to write up here on the board, the different combinations of pizzas you can make. So you can make a pizza with just cheese, with just um, sausage is the S I used here. Um, or just peppers, or you could combine cheese and sausage, cheese and peppers, or just meat, sausage, and peppers, uh, meat and veggies, or you could have all three 
on there. And so there are seven possible combinations, or again, arrangement of ingredients. And which pizza would you pick? And I personally would probably just do peppers. And so the chance, the probability that I'm going to walk into the pizza place without ordering, and they're going to hand me a pizza with just peppers, is one out of seven. Again, probability is your desired outcome. For me, that would be a pizza with peppers out of the total possible outcomes, which be a seven different combinations of pizza ingredients. So again, probability, desired outcomes over your total possible outcomes. And so once you've done that and the kids have figured out, now you can't, um, you cannot order your pizza at this pizza place. Um, because it's a probability pizza place. And so if you were to order, then that takes away the dilemma for the most part, if they're a dependable pizza place. Um, but um, that should at least lower your probability of not getting what you want. Um, so this is, you don't get to order at this pizza place. And that's why it's a chance that you're taking where they just hand you a box. Um, once you've done that, you can then talk about, okay, well, what if we add in a gluten-free crust? So now you could get rather a regular crust or you could get a gluten-free crust. So now how many possible total outcomes do we have? So I want a pizza with peppers on a regular crust. So what is the probability that I'm going to get that? Well, then you're going to go back through all these same ingredients but they're rather going to have, you can put it out here maybe, regular crust on all of them. So that would be seven possibilities. Or they're going to have gluten-free crust on all of the same ingredients, and that would be another seven possibilities. So now we have 14 possible pizzas they could hand me, and I want the pepper with regular crust. So now my probability of getting the pizza I want is 1 in 14. Again, my desired outcome over the total outcomes. And if you want to go a step further, you could add an ingredient. So get the class to vote on what would be the other ingredient you would add to the probability pizza place. Um, and say they want to add anchovies, just to be exciting. Um, so if they added a whole other ingredient, well, then you're going to go back through. They could have all these pizzas. They also could have a pizza that had just anchovies. And then they could have... Um, all these different ones with added anchovies, which would be another seven, so eight different types. And so then you would end up with 15 different total possible outcomes um, if you just added one ingredient. Um, so you could continue, especially with the older kids. For the younger kids, I would stop there, obviously. For the bigger kids, you could add more ingredients and continue just to figure out on the board together um, all the different possibilities um, that you could have with combining different ingredients. And again, a combination, it doesn't matter the order that you put these ingredients in, they're also going to be on there um, in whatever pizza you get. And then, um, so then I would, you know, again, have the kids talk about their favorite ingredients, why do they like certain pizza things. Um, the little ones, they could then, or all of them at the end, could draw their favorite pizza on their pizza crust here um, with their favorite ingredients and um, kind of go from there. Then you probably will still have some time. So then I would talk about this idea of combination probability dilemmas in our world. What are other combinations that we might deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, a classic one are clothes. And so um, I kept this one simple for our purposes. For the bigger kids, you could make it more complex. Um, but for the younger kids, just keep it simple. So say I had, I needed to pick a top and a bottom to wear each day. I have one short sleeve shirt, one long sleeve shirt, one pair of shorts, and one pair of pants. What is the probability that I'm going to reach in and draw the shirt I need and draw the bottoms I need to fit the weather that day. Well, you know, your possible options are short sleeve and um, A is for athletic because um, I don't want to use another S. So athletic shorts 
or I could get short sleeves and pants, or I could draw out the long sleeves with my athletic shorts or the long sleeves with pants. So um, if it was a nice warm spring day, like we had a couple of, or a cold rainy day like today, if it was a cold rainy day today, I'm going for the long sleeves and pants. And I have a one in four chance of just randomly drawing that out, the probability of that. Um, but you can do this with different colors or say you have um, six shirts and six pants, all that are the same, how many different combinations or you could do different color shirts and different color pants if you wanted to. Um, how many kids could you clothe? Um, that kind of thing with just combining them randomly. Um, so clothing is a great combination probability. Um, you could also talk about cupcakes and icing um, or the difference. You could do different flavored icings as far as in other toppings. So sprinkles and chocolates and everything else. So you could do another um, food one with that. Um, then for the older kids, so you could mention just in passing, um, this idea of permutation. So permutation is when order does matter. So the classic little thing there is that combination is grouping things. Like we are here, we're grouping clothes. Doesn't matter what I reach in and pick out for my clothes. I'm still going to get a shirt and I'm still going to get some pants. Um, doesn't really matter what order we put the ingredients on. There's still going to be these different options. But permutation would be if you're going to list things. Um, specifically like giving places in the science fair. You're going to have a first, second, and third place trophy. Um, so if you're going to do that, um, the order that you do that in will change your total outcomes for each one. So if you give, say you have 20 kids, you give one first place, then your options, your total probability for how many op, um, total outcomes could be for second place is going to be 19 instead of 20. Your third place, now you already have a first and second place, your third place, your total outcomes is going to be one out of 18. And so it's going to change your actual total outcomes and your actual probability solution. Um, and so order does matter. Even though there's a group of kids, the order, because you're doing a first, a second, a third, um, it matters. And that's called permutation. Um, apparently, the mathematical joke is that a combination lock should have been called a permutation lock because the order that we do those numbers in actually matters. Obviously, if you do them out of order, it won't work. And so even though it's a combination, a group of numbers we're using, the order does matter. And that is called a permutation instead of a commu um, combination. <laughs> Get my words all mixed up. Okay. Hope that makes sense and have fun making pizza.